once we are through this crisis, I don't know when that win is, but it's going to change the way we build, manage uh, uh, our you know infrastructure, you know how we consume or use cloud. Uh, so a lot of lessons that we have learned from this phase will actually improve our our you know infrastructure. So what what do you see trends that you know a lot of things that people are just reacting right now just to be functional, but a lot of practices will become a norm. So what will be the new norm that you will see in this space? Hi, this is Sonil Bhartia and welcome to another edition of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Jenny Fong, VP of Marketing at Diamond T. Uh, Jenny, first of all, welcome to the show. In this is COVID-19 era, we are doing everything uh, online and remote. So welcome to the show. Thank you. And thank you for having me today. Yes, it's great to be able to talk to some people even wherever you're based. <laughs> first of all, tell us a bit about in the changing times, you know, as you know, the workload is changing, you know, the adoption of cloud native technologies is all changing. How is Diamond T evolving? Evolving itself. Then we will talk about the products. Yeah. So this is one one of the great things about um, the founding of this company. The the co-founders of this company came from the Cisco UCS team. They foresaw correctly that the move was, the world was moving towards this cloud native architecture that was fundamentally different than the previous generation of applications. Uh, and so they really went about just redesigning the, the server to fit these cloud native apps. And so we see that coming true now where companies are rapidly adopting microservices architectures based on containers and then orchestrating them in Kubernetes. And so we have a Kubernetes platform that is combined with some of the uh, underlying infrastructure management capabilities for a modern hyper-converged hyper infrastructure offering so that we can give customers both that infrastructure platform for their new modern applications that's high performance and also easy to get started. And that's becoming more and more important this year as more companies see the value of, you know, these microservices applications during this COVID time where it gives you that better resilience and that better ability to scale to any, uh, you know, to scale across geographies and to scale across clouds. Uh, so we see this as a great opportunity to help customers accomplish their modernization efforts uh, with our platform. So if you just stick to this topic, you know, uh, we have been talking about digital transformation for a while. We have been talking about that people should move to the cloud. Now suddenly the companies who already have cloud strategy in place, they are the one who are succeeding, who are you know still operational functional through this crisis. Uh, uh, so. Uh, once we are through this crisis, I don't know when that win is, but it's going to change the way we build, manage uh, uh, our you know infrastructure, you know how we consume or use cloud. Uh, so a lot of lessons that we have learned from this phase will actually improve our our you know infrastructure. So what what do you see trends that you know a lot of things that people are just reacting right now just to be functional, but a lot of practices will become a norm. So what will be the new norm that you will see in this space? Yeah, I think the new norms, um, one is what we talked about, This uh, all applications are going to be moving towards microservices and containers. Um, but the new norm is also going to be uh, a big focus on multi-cloud, right? So not just uh, hybrid cloud, but multi-cloud. And we see that because a uh, great example is when COVID hit, uh, companies needed to be able to distribute their workloads to their remote workforce or remote partners, remote customers. Um, and having that ability to be, uh, have that flexibility to pick and choose where to deploy applications. So I think multi-cloud is going to be the new norm. Microservices is going to be the new norm. And then this last bit, which is really interesting for our company, is we're seeing this um, maturity in terms of modernizing stateful applications. And, and uh, this is in addition to stateless applications. So if you think about the first generation of modern apps, so the first generation of microservices, they were mostly built on a pure stateless uh, format. But what we're seeing today is more databases, Kafka, Elasticsearch, all these new data processing applications are also getting modernized, also getting containerized. Uh, and so we're seeing that we're, we've hit this maturity with Kubernetes and containers that more companies are willing to uh, make that change to this new format. And so I think those three things are going to stay uh, beyond just this year and continue to be the way that 
companies want to operate. Uh, and as more and more stateful, you know, kind of applications are running there, I, I, I think uh, high availability and data protection also becomes a very, you know, critical piece because now, I mean, when you're in your data center, do you have everything? What, what, what are your thoughts about that? How will that be uh, impacted? That's exactly right. I mean, if you look at, again, early days of Kubernetes, it was very much designed around the stateless application. So when you talk about stateful apps, there's a whole different set of, of capabilities you need to make sure that that's performing, that's reliable, that's highly available. Um, you know, in, I kind of say in the world of stateless applications, an application goes down, you just restart it, right? But when you have a database, you need to actually be able to, um, you know, take a snapshot of, of what's in that database. And if it fails or you need to restart it, come back up to that same point in time. And so that does open up more challenges in terms of how you operate a stateful application. Uh, thankfully, the technology has really caught up and really been, there's been a lot of innovation both in the open source world as well, well as the um, commercial world where uh, people are bringing all the, the kind of the goodness of how we handled you know, say a virtualized stateful application, bringing that to that container space as well. Um, and that's one area that Diamante has excelled in and, and has really invested a lot of uh, capabilities around. So the platform that we have today supports a lot of higher level data services. So uh, bu built in snapshot, backup, restore, um, and async replication. So all of the capabilities that you would expect in a non-containerized infrastructure environment we've brought to the container infrastructure. Excellent. Yeah, that's going to be critical. Now let's let's talk about Spectra because as you always said, you know, that you know it's going to be multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. People will run their workload wherever it makes sense, but it also means that their workload is spread across a different, you know, Kubernetes cluster. And you have to be kind of agnostic, doesn't it should not matter where it's running. So so what role is or, or what problem are you seeing in this space that you want to solve with this version 3.0 tries to address? And, and before that, just tell us a bit about Aspectra itself. What what is it? Yeah. So uh, as I said, uh, the original founders of Diamante went out to set about this new um, platform for, for the cloud native world. It What we have in Diamante Spectra is a combination of a software stack as well as hardware. Um, Spectra is our software stack, though, that we've been really focusing a lot of um, R&D on and making sure that we can deliver what our customers need. And our customers tend to be, you know, Fortune 100 banks, um, energy large companies who have, you know, security and performance requirements. Uh, so what we have is a software stack that, uh, or what we're looking to solve is, generally speaking, when you talk about Kubernetes, one of the benefits is portability. But as we mentioned, portability of not just stateless applications, but also stateful applications. So one of the key things that we see is a challenge with the, with what's out there in the market today is if I want to make a decision on when, where my stateful application runs uh, b before 3.0, that was very difficult. Uh, with our new release, what we can do is help companies have the flexibility to not just deploy a stateful apps to one location, but also to migrate it to another location. Because we have that capability and insight into the storage layer, where we can do those snapshots, we can also migrate that data to another, um, either another Diamante environment or to the public cloud. So that's one major problem. The second that we see is that as companies expand into multiple clusters, uh, because they want to run Kubernetes everywhere and that's becoming the common foundation for modern apps, one of the challenges they have is supporting more clients or more tenants within an organization. Uh, a lot of the people who have been dealing with Kubernetes for a long time know that, you know, you have namespaces as a, as a fundamental way to divide uh, resources between projects. But it's not a great uh, barrier between, say, if you're a managed service provider, you don't have the separation between tenants within a cluster uh, the way that an MSP would like to operate. So the second thing that we're addressing with Diamante Spectre 3.0 is the ability to support these multi, uh, managed service provider use cases or even you know stricter barriers between business units by adding a layer of isolation for multi-tenancy. 
So this really does help with the scaling, uh, allowing your one cloud administrative team or your, your one ops team support multiple cluster, uh, clusters and multiple customers. Can you talk about, uh, first of all, uh, how much open source you consume? Of course, you know, we live in the open source world. Uh, and uh, in, in terms of Spectra, you know, are you using any open source components or are there any open source projects that you're involved with? Can you talk about that piece? So, you know, first of all, Diamante has been involved in the open source um, efforts from the very beginning, uh, working very closely with Cloud Native Computing Foundation and even the Kubernetes project before it was, uh, was you know, 1.0. Um, so Diamante actually helped to define the original Flex Volume plugin, which became the predecessor to what's known as uh, the CSI plugin now, the, the Container Storage Interface plugin. And so we've been involved heavily with the SIG storage and, and getting some of the enhancements needed into the Kubernetes uh, core project, not just from storage, but also in the orchestration side. Um, and then our platform really is built around these open source components. We like to, you know, say that we have a vanilla Kubernetes distribution. It's a certified Kubernetes distribution that is part of our platform. Uh, but then we add some additional services above it and beyond that around, you know, role-based access controls um, and things that an enterprise typically needs. But the internal components are really just open source based standard um, interfaces standard uh, capabilities. In Spectra 3.0, one of the things we did add was support for Helm 3, which gives us the ability to deploy uh, applications to these multiple clusters from Helm. And then we also use things like Prometheus for monitoring. Uh, so very much involved in open source still, as well as uh, continuing to put focus on on embracing some of the, the new technology that comes out of CNCF. Awesome. There's one thing I want to talk to you about or get your insight into it, that we are, we are looking at, you know, edge computing is going to become, because when you look at cloud, you know, you have your, your data and everything else is far from you closer to the cloud, but edge computing offers a totally different challenges, but that is also picking up, you know. Um, uh, is edge computing within the radar of DMNT? If If yes, what work is going on in that space? Yeah, edge computing is a really interesting space right now and something we're definitely looking at with this release. Um, you know, the ability to manage multiple clusters. Sure, there's there's kind of the cornerstone use case around enterprises having, you know, staging and production in different uh, clouds or, or between different clusters on-prem. Uh, but the capabilities we are building in to manage these multiple clusters today allows us to also start to really embrace these edge computing use cases. Uh, we are already in conversation with a few uh, prospects and customers around the you know different use cases like retail and branch location, video processing, or uh, working with energy companies and and who have maybe oil rigs to monitor and uh, lots of new cases use cases here. Uh, what's unique about the Diamante offer for Edge is that again our background is that we have this integrated software and hardware solution, and uh, when you think about an Edge location, been we have the ability to take our appliance into those locations, um, providing you know high performance compute at the edge, uh, and then having that complete integrated system with the software so that you can all you manage all of them. Uh, with one control plane. And so definitely edge computing is definitely an emerging market. It's it's very exciting space and it's one that uh, we are opening ourselves up to with this particular release. Uh, J Jenny, thank you so much for taking your time out and you know uh, sitting down or standing up here with me today <laughs> to talk about it. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us. We're excited about this release and uh, hope you have a great day.